We're doing the thing. Oh, hi, everyone. Happy, happy Saturday. Welcome to the continuation of our girl underground game. Welcome, whoa, whoa, welcome. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That was. I was just... <laughs> hey, welcome on in, everyone. Thank you, Q and Chris, for those resubs. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. Um, if you missed the first part of our girl underground game, that's okay. Come in and hang out with us anyway. It's still going to be great and adorable and wonderful and an adventure, but also you can check it out on YouTube and see this whole game. All of it. Um, it's a super heckin' cute game, uh, by Lauren Mech, Nanamon, and Jesse Ross, Girl Underground, which is probably invisible on the screen right now. It's magic. Um. Uh, no, it's fine. You can see it. Yeah. You can see, you can see some <laughs> of it. Check out this game. It's super cute. Um, it's heckin' awesome. Um, are you gonna do a recap for us? So I don't have to, like, try and get... Uh, yeah, I guess I could do that. Sure. <laughs> Oh, I was wondering if you wanted to do the GM thing where you're like, I expect someone else to now do a recap. <laughs> no, I mean, not not for this one. I can do the recap. <laughs> I'm like, mm. I mean, I could I could try. We made a we made a cute girl together. Her name was Kat. She was adorable. She was stuck at a very boring party full of, you know, um, not nice tea, which we fix later. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she chased some glittery butterflies into the forest um and carefully i feel like i feel like carefully went down a hole yeah i like there was there was care involved yeah i'm pretty sure like megan you were in control of cat at that point mm -hmm. and i i feel like you yeah i was very careful you know you look before... there's only so much you can lower yourself down to like an unlimited hole before <laughs> <laughs> So the girl went, got into a forest where the trees were mean, and they picked her up, and she met a fawn who asked them to put her down, and she did a toot to help convince <laughs> the trees to put her down. Uh, and then the girl and her fawn friend went and found a beautiful, a beautiful mermaid in a bathtub, not being treated like the royalty that she was. So heckin' rude. And... <laughs> uh, and then they teamed up and they had to go to the castle together where they saw a big sweet ogre being picked on by a, a meanie a big bully meanie crow king mm -hmm. I feel like I'm doing pretty good at this summary so far you are oh, yeah, yeah, you're this nailing, is very good. nailing and, it and then they went and all got um, ordered some tea except for our ogre friend who made their own tea very very carefully and precisely when you have when you have refined taste and you know what you want listen <laughs> refined might not be the right word <laughs> Sp specific taste yes but very very organic yeah <laughs> very unrefined yes and while they were having tea they found out that um Kat's mom had actually, our little girl Kat, her mom had actually been through here before and was a known hero of the lands. Um, and that if we went to the nearby mountains and found uh, the adventurer Cat Diamond, um, they might be able to help us in our quest to get Cat home, I believe. That's not from yep. notes. That was all, all off accurate. the top of my head. I feel like Nailed I did okay. Mm -hmm. you, did. you did. You did yeah. well. So, hi, everyone. That's the summary. My name's Jess. It's my channel. You can find me at go <laughs> underscore digi. Let's go say hi to everyone and see who they're playing today. Oh, yeah. I'm a fawn. <laughs> <laughs> that's Let's, who she's playing. That's and like also just who she is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I'm a oh, fawn. Yeah, I'm a fawn. <laughs> but what character are you playing? Uh, I am playing Ethan. <laughs> they use they, them pronouns. Um, and they are a fawn. Also, it's oh, like queaky dink. So like, fun. hey. Yep. Um, let's go around and say hi to Lemmy. Hi, I'm Lemmy. <laughs> um, <laughs> just kind of blanked after that. <laughs> <laughs> you got the important part. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long night. Um, yeah. My my um eldest woke up at four a.m. And would not go back to sleep so it's just been yeah it's one of those those nights uh i'm playing oak 
who is an ogre. They have magic horns. Um, yes, tiny magic horns on the top of their head right here. They speak kind of slow. Um, oh, they them pronouns. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh, let's go say hi to Megan. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm a mermaid. And then I'm playing a mermaid <laughs> named Mira. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I am playing a mermaid named Mira. She is the runaway. She's a runaway mermaid princess who is traveling the land in search of adventure in her enchanted walking bathtub named Jules. As you do. Um, yeah. She's pretty fun. She's got a big crown and a fancy bathtub. <laughs> and I'm Jason, and I am the story guide for this game. So I don't, I just play the NPCs and let the rest of them go crazy with their mm -hmm. characters and the girl. Yeah. Yes, we're all, we, and all of us are the girl together. That's awesome. I love that. I love that mechanic. Can I just oh. say? So I guess my first question would be, who is starting off playing Cat this oh. time? That's I mean, good. I can make you guys like randomly roll for it if you want. Do it. Roll for it. Except I don't have any dice, so you roll would have to roll. Roll for girl. So... <laughs> roll for girl. Yeah, you pick, a, you pick a number between one and six, and then we'll all roll on whoever's closest. Is the girl. Yeah. OK. All right. All right. All right. I picked right. my number. What rolled, what are we rolling with the D6. D6. D6, okay. I rolled a six. Uh, I rolled a three. Uh, um, this uh, a one. We spaced <laughs> out that far. really. Yeah. I was gonna say, what what if should, we should have established more rules for this because yeah. all two of you are one away from the number I was thinking. <laughs> Dang it! I'll do it. Yeah. All right. You, you, yeah. you were one of the people because the number I was thinking of was two. Yeah. Wow. Two is a good number. I really like two. It's very even. Mm. You know. Prime. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prime example of a number. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. So we have our, our player for cat, and we have our three companions, the mermaid Mira, the ogre Oak, and the Fawn Ifon who have emerged from the grasping wood um, and see ahead of them this vast, tall mountain. And before that mountain, at the base of it, you see a small, it, it looks like a small castle keep. Um, it's sort of a squarish squat building with battlements atop it, and there are a number of like pennant flags flapping in the wind. Um, what's especially unusual about it, though, is it's on two legs. They're sort of hoofed, furry legs. And it is sort of galloping, like it, the whole keep sways slightly with each galloping step along the base of the mountain. And you're pretty sure that would be the castle of the adventure Cad Diamond, because there probably aren't too many walking castles around here. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. So it's just like walking? Is it like... It is yeah. slowly walking along this. It's not really a road. It's sort of a beaten path along the base of this mountain. Okay. What's what's it like like between us and them? Like, is it like open? It's or... like a plains. It's okay. like there are these tall grasses. Like, cat could actually hide in the, in the grass pretty effectively, but... Hmm. Oak definitely can't hide in this grass. Mm. Do we do we have to be sneaky? Like, no. I mean, you haven't. No one's told you you would have to sneak up there. Okay. Well, that looks to be where we need to go. So let's let's go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you're just approaching the, the walking castle. Yeah. yeah. I don't see why okay. not. You know, this is uh this is there's a walking castle. We're supposed to meet the people. It's what we want. Uh why go roundabout about this? Let's just Hey! Uh, hey castle! 
Are you? Do you, you do that when you, get to the, yep. when you get to the base <laughs> of the castle? Start right. shouting at the castle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, castle, is it you? Are you the one that we're... Do you, do you know... Hey, castle, do you know a diamond dude? Do you, uh... Hey. As you're shouting at the castle, at first, it doesn't seem like anyone hears you, but then the castle kind of shudders to a halt and just stays still on uh, it's shifting slightly on its legs um, but it actually settles down on its haunches a little bit um, so it's still towering above you but it lowered itself a little um, and you're still shouting up at it yeah oh well not if it stops like oh hey look it's uh i i feel like that's a good sign that means we can it stopped for us right that's i wonder where it got its legs I mean, where did you get your oh yeah like maybe it can, <laughs> maybe it can like give me some pointers. awkward <laughs> it's like um i mean i could use a pair so yeah hey I mean, castle but, do you really want to trade though the one the, what you got there looks pretty good i mean it's okay i can't go upstairs though yeah but you know if you know if that if that castle were to fall in like water It'd be at an extreme disadvantage to you. I, I mean, all right. Yeah, I guess I won't get legs right now, but it's always good to have options. Yeah, no, I could see that. Oh, <laughs> imagine if you could have like both. You could like choose. If it was like a skirt, you could like take one off, put the other one on. You're like, oh, I feel like this one today, and then you like switch them. That'd be great. And you hear a voice. <laughs> hey, hey, now, who are you? Can coming I, from up above. Yeah, can you see anyone or can we yeah. just like hear the voice? You you look up and you see a small figure. You barely barely make them out from here standing on top of one of the battlements. Um they are probably only like 2 feet tall. And you squint against the sunlight and you see they are a cat. But they're standing on their legs, hind legs. And they're wearing like a like tabard, like they're dressed like a knight or something mm -hmm. like that. They don't wear armor, but they have a tabard. A cat knight. Mm. A knight say, cat. Who? Who are you? Um, are you Cat Diamond? Oh no no no! I'm not. I'm Sir Stripes. Um, hello, Sir Stripes. I am Princess Mira. Um, these are my royal retainers, Ifan and Oak and Cat with a K, and we are hoping to talk to Cat Diamond if they are here. They are here! This is the castle of the illustrious and heroic Cat Diamond. But what do you need to see them about? I think Mira's going to, like, nudge Cat a little bit and be like, tell... Tell them what you're looking for. My mom? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think we have any moms here. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty certain we don't. Um. Uh, well, like, the... They would know about my mom? Or, like, where she went? Oh, you're looking for information? Yeah. Yes. Well, that we might know. Mm. Is it safe to let you in? Yes, uh of course. And did you in, in the mm, the bathtub? What you've never seen somebody in a bathtub before? Well, no, I have seen someone in a bathtub before. Not here. Usually in a in a room with a bathtub in it. Well, have bathtub will travel. <laughs> it, it, you you said these were your retainers. 
yes, yes, I am a princess traveling from a faraway land with my royal retinue. Um, but this small girl, cat with a K, not to be confused with yourself, cat with a C. Um, Thank you for that. Is looking for her mother or perhaps some information on how to return home. And we are told that this was the place to go. Fair enough. One moment. And Sir Stripes vanishes from the battlements. Um, and you're all sort of left waiting for a minute. And then the castle lowers itself even lower. So the knees sort of bend and the castle lowers. And a drawbridge opens. But as the drawbridge opens and extends to the ground, there's actually a set of stairs that are on it. Hmm. Well, this is inconvenient. Wait, why would why would you have a bridge and stairs? The the the, the drawbridge is much more accessible. You should really focus on that. Accessibility <laughs> is very important. There, I mean, there is an area the stairs don't take up the entire bridge, so there's like plank area on both sides, um, but then there's stairs because it lowers to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sir Stripes is hopping down the stairs, uh, which is a little bit awkward for a two foot tall cat knight. Walking on um, two legs? Yes, walking on two legs. I um, love them. He, he sort of bounces down the stairs and says, oh, looks at Mira and says, um, can you go up the stairs? No. Can you go up the the bridge here? I mean, yes, if it's, it's a ramp. Jules, Jules can get up a ramp there. All right. Well, just their their feet are so far apart. Stairs are very difficult. Sorry, oh. sorry. We we don't get many walking bathtubs here. So and then uh, Oak like puts down Cat, and then like like says, "Walk, please." And then picks up uh, jewels <laughs> and like carries the bathtub in. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, oh, thank, thank you, Oak. But like, can't get through the doorway. So like, picks it up and then like <laughs> scoots the bat, like, picks it up to the door and like scoots it in like and just, like pushes it in <laughs> until, she's, until she's all the way inside um, i think as soon as jules feet hit the like ground yes. like the bathtub just sort of scrambles <laughs> forward like, jules feet doing like this in the air they're like the, uh, like the dogs uh, that you hold yeah. up above the water yeah they're like they're like already ready to paddle before you put them down <laughs> jules the bathtub is like what a good bathtub. <laughs> yeah. This is a very good bathtub. So I oh. think, do all all of you go inside? Uh, of course. I'm, in fact, trying to peek around Sir Stripes. <laughs> peek inside? Yeah. I'm trying to... <laughs> uh, what you see around Sir Stripes as you're peeking around, it's not very hard to peek around Sir Stripes because they are two feet tall, um, is a large sort of open foyer room it has all these really expensive and old looking tapestries hanging on the walls and statues. Um, and as you go inside, Sir Stripes turns to you and says, the hero Cad Diamond has traveled this realm far and wide. I'm sure that he'll have some way of helping you with what you need. He has seen everything. He has been to all the lands, seen all of the people. He's battled terrible monsters and he has saved many princesses. And he looks to Mira and says, no mermaid princesses yet, but other princesses. I'm sure he can help you. And he sort of ushers you into this foyer room, um, which is just grand and opulent. Like there's things in here. It looks sort of like a museum. So, uh... Yeah. Ooh, can I try a thing? Uh, you can certainly try a thing. <laughs> um, so I have an ability that 
lets me roll to seek a location secrets or hidden treasures. Mm -hmm. Can I like, as we're like walking into this room that's like museum-y, can I kind of just like do a lap and just kind of like, like look over things and see if anything stands out to me as being like, like super valuable. If there's anything that's trying to be like kind of tucked away, like that kind of thing. Sure. Okay. Give me a roll. Yeah, it's a 10. Yay! Okay. So you get to tell me, what do you find and how do you discover it? Oh. Because you said you were searching for something valuable, but yeah. you get to decide, what what do you find? Well, I'm trying to... Hmm. I mean, I will set the scene that there are things from all over, from lands you haven't seen before, Mira. Um, it's an odd collection of of things. And... As you're looking around and examining these things, you start to make the connection that these things didn't belong to Cad Diamond to begin with. Hmm. They are from ancient civilizations or some even current civilizations, but... Yeah, I didn't want to say that. I was getting a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> this guy might be a Cad. <laughs> <laughs> um so I was hmm. So I think I find like I wanted because first I was trying to figure out if it was something to do with Kat's mom. But I don't know what you'd have to do with Kat's mom. I think what I find is like a um like a really fancy like gold like sextant. With like there's like a little nautical section of like boat type stuff and that's what i'm drawn to but it doesn't look like anything from like the sea where i'm from okay yeah so far you have not found anything from your kingdom but Good. you do see like things from kingdoms that you recognize mm -hmm. good stay away from my kingdom you thief and as <laughs> you're as you're looking around um sir stripes continues to just basically speak so highly of Cad Diamond. He has saved the world in on multiple occasions. Um, is that is that so? Is that uh like is is that what he told you? Or uh did you uh did you see these worlds being saved? Did uh did they give him these things as gifts to thank him for saving them? Well, well, I mean, I, I wasn't there when he saved the world, you know, worlds. Um, but I've, I've heard, and you know, I'm, I'm new around here, um, and, and I don't know. I mean, he's, he's built up a collection of things far and wide. I, I'm sure there are rewards for all yeah. his good deeds. Mm -hmm. Well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, certainly quite, quite the collection. Um, I know a thing or two about collections. Mermaids tend to be hoarders. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, is, is he coming down here? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, one, one moment. And Sir Stripes runs to the end of the foyer. Um, and he pulls out, he goes around the corner of a doorway. And he comes back with this absurdly large, for him, like trumpet. And it has little ribbons hanging down from it, multicolored ribbons. And he just like blares a note on the trumpet. He says, Oh, now announcing the arrival of the hero Cad Diamond. And from around the door comes this um, middle-aged, you would say, man. Um, he's actually got like five o'clock shadow um, and just ruffled brown hair. Um, he is dressed in a patchwork of armor and he is wearing a tabard with a picture of a diamond on it. And he just kind of sort of stumbles around the door and says, 
Hello. What? What? Who are you? Um. Yes. Hello. Um. I am Princess Mira. Traveling this land. These are my royal emissaries, Yvonne and Oak, and this is our small friend, Cat, who needs help finding her mother. Cat sort of looks over at Sir Stripes and says, Stripes, did, did you bring a child in, into my castle? You know this is not a very child safe <laughs> environment. I'm, I'm really not good with children either. Oh, anyway, um, yes, you need my assistance, fair princess. Oh, oh, I just wanted to come and see a mountain, um, but um, I would very much like if you were to help my small friend here, um, who's looking for her mother, um, whose name was, Mira's gonna look over at Kat be like, Rose, right? Do you know about my mom? Her name is Rose. Oh, um, oh, child. Um, your your mother's name is Rose. Uh, hmm. I I kind of look like her. And he's he kneels down on one knee and he's like peering at you. Huh. Um, you know, and and you said she's been around here before, because you don't look like someone who is from here. Just saying. I'm I'm not from here. Uh, but you're. If you haven't if you haven't heard of her mother Rose, perhaps. You've heard of um, uh, Panya from the tea shop told us there was an infamous, very famous um, knight, uh, The Rose. Have you heard of The Rose? Huh. I, you're telling me that The Rose is her mother? It seems that way. That, that's, that's what we're led to believe. Mm -hmm, do, you, mm -hmm. do, you know, do you know of The Rose? Well, yes, uh, yes, everyone knows of the Rose. She was a hero, a lot like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, almost as heroic as I am. Ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, you know, continue to tell us what you know. <laughs> well, um, the Rose came and she saved this region uh, a number of years ago. Um, but then she um, just vanished and then the Crowing King took, took over and... Hmm. We saw, yeah, we had the displeasure of encountering the Crowing King on our way here. No, not a great individual. Yeah, I'm. I'm not really allowed back in the grasping wood. Chroming King seems to think that I have some things that belong to him, but. Um, Do no. you? I have taken no things from the Crowing King that I did not rightfully deserve. Like right after that, like <laughs> you hear this kind of like, like construction kind of crunching movement because like Oak still hasn't gotten inside the house, so he made the, <laughs> the doorway a little bit bigger, and is like just like, like got an elbow in and is trying to get through this doorway, and it's like. So yeah. you hear this crunching and banging and shattering noises. And Cad just leaps up from where they were kneeling down. Um, oh, an ogre. Oh, no, no. Oh, I spent oh. a lot of money on that. They're our friend. Yeah. They're, they're... Just. 
Uh, Be all right. Yeah. Uh, oh, anyway, so you're looking for the rose. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, you, yes, you followed along correctly for that part. I might know something, but. Why do I feel like there's a but coming? <laughs> if I tell you and I aid you, um, perhaps you can help me as well. Uh, I mean, we kind of already have like some big quests. We're do what were you thinking? Well, um, it said this is this is just a story, but it it said that the rose is trapped. That she has been transformed into an ever blooming rose. That's ironic. Mm -hmm. And that she was stolen away by the dragon, who lives at the top of this peak. Do those of us from this land know about this dragon? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you have any specific moves that are related to like knowing about the dragon, but possibly. Um, I was just wondering if it was like a known thing of the land. Okay. I mean, it is definitely known. I'm just trying to think if you would know anything more specific. Um, what I you can do to learn its secrets. What you do definitely <laughs> know is that you have heard of the dragon before. Um, who does not have a name is just the dragon, as far as you've uh -huh. ever heard. Um, they are said to be a terrifying, destructive creature. Um, no one's seen the dragon in quite some time. Oh, I do have something. I do have something. I do have something. I do have something. <laughs> what do you have? Chorus, chorus. Roll when you recall a song or a rhyme from the place you're current. Like, I'm trying to roll to see if there's, like, a song about the dragon. Can I? Oh, yeah, yes, you can roll. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what did you get? Um, oh, no, this is not good. <laughs> Uh, I got a six, which means that instead you have to warp the song to be against us to, to give us, like, I guess, bad information about the dragon. Oh, no. uh. Yeah, it's, uh, how does the song twist against us? Instead, um... Well, no, so, I, so I, it's I, like, oh no, I have heard of it, but it's like really bad. Yes, you, you, ha you know a song um, that just speaks of the dragon destroying kingdoms um just a terrifying evil creature um greedy beyond compare who just scoops up everything they'll value steals it returns back to their layer in the peaks and apparently also has the ever blooming rose oh no oh no you're not talking about like that dragon are you like the dragon, where they sing the really scary songs about how if it shows up, you're kind of doomed, and it's going to take all your stuff, and you're never going to see it again. And then that one, that say it's not that dragon. Is it that dragon? It is that dragon. Oh. But, 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 you have brought to me a very strong ogre who caused a little bit of damage on their way in. And... You yourself are a fawn. I, I know how tricky you can be. And a princess. And a small child. Looks, looks down at Kat. She's not a small child. She's 12. Yes, and she's shown herself to be quite capable thus far. She did, in fact, take on uh, the croaking. Mm -hmm. And she did teach us about bubble tea. Yeah, that was pretty so, magical. About, about what? Yeah, I that's don't right. Think anyway, <laughs> um, I figure we can go pay the dragon's lair a visit. Oh, we? Oh, you're, we. you're coming with us. Well, yes. I, I always wanted to go to the dragon's lair, um, but just, you know, myself and Sir Strife's 
uh, it just didn't seem like a good idea at the time. My schedule was really full. You know, I have a lot of heroic things to do. Oh. Um, but you're all here. So no time like the present, right? Hmm. Well, and so. what, you had alluded to us needing to do something for you in exchange. I think it's just taking him to the, just the dragon. Was it just yes. taking? That it's, seems it's, like a good enough deal, right? Yeah, just taking him to the dragon. Sure that's good. Okay, good. I'm glad yeah. we made this decision all together. Yeah. Great. Right, we're already going. So <laughs> that's definitely all you wanted, and all we're agreeing to do for you. Right? Yes. Good. Glad we figured this out. I, I'm not sure about the way you said that. But um, they're, they're a fawn. You know how their their colloquialisms are somewhat different than others, so everything's fine. Um, Cat? Is... Do you want to go see a dragon? Cat's like, kind of whispers to herself, like, dragon. It's just like... <laughs> A dragon, just like <clears throat> kind of like uh, mystified by the that there's an actual dragon <laughs> to go see, like, and she kind of like nods her head, just like there's a little twinkle in her eye as well, just like dragon. Yeah, yeah. We should yeah. definitely probably keep in mind <clears throat> that it's actually extremely dangerous and known for the terror that it evokes. But also, sometimes scary things are great, right? This is gonna be awesome. <laughs> Right? And like, and like, <laughs> Ifan is like <laughs> trying to get Cat <laughs> pumped up about this dangerous adventure. <laughs> Danger! See, yeah! Uh, as as Ifan is doing that, Cat starts shifting uncomfortably. Um, and he walks over to Cat and says, Well, um, now let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. Cat um, with a K. You're. A young child. Um, I think it'd probably best if you stayed out of the way as much as possible and let, you know, the heroes take care of all of this. I mean, I. She, yeah, she kind of like glares at, glares at him, just like. And then, um, like, while she's glaring at him, like, oh, comes from behind. And like, kind of like stands with Cat and just kind of like sees what she's doing, and he does the same thing. They they do the same thing. Yeah. Oh, um, yes. Well, anyway, I'm just just for your own safety. I'm just saying that, you know, I've done this adventuring thing for quite some time, longer than you've probably been alive. And then uh, Oak goes. Um, she is safe with me. Right, right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure she is. Well then, um, are we doing this to the dragon? Yes, it sounds that way. Um, how, what, what type of climb up this mountain are we talking well we can take my castle up a certain portion of the mountain where there are established paths and trails um, then we will have to go on foot the rest of the way near the peak all right <laughs> on heck yeah dragon adventures <laughs> let's go <laughs> come on everyone and like Ifan goes to like start walking and then remembers that the castle's gonna take us and just like oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Heck yeah. Adventure. Yeah. I call window seat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cat is turns like, this. Yeah. Is there like a steering wheel for this? Do you just like tell it where to go and it goes? Is it like do you is there like a helm? Is there like are there sails? Is there a rudder? Like Well, uh there is there is a way to control the castle. There's a throne. And if I sit on the throne and I tell it where to go, it goes. <laughs> Is so Yvonne much making shade. a face? <laughs> <laughs> well, mm. come come see. You see, you look skeptical. 
I would like to see. That sounds interesting. Well, Is that everyone, me? follow. Um, oh, follow carefully. Be be very careful. This, these things are, are extremely valuable. Um, I'm surprised, but like, the, it, it's not happening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I actually think that I'm going to there's there's the the make make room roll. Oh, um, oh no. <laughs> so give give me 2d6. Okay. Uh, so I got four five nine. Yeah. Okay. So you do manage to navigate your way through these um really fancy and expensive hallways, oak. Um, but somehow in the process, you embarrass yourself or cause a scene. Tell me, tell me what Oak does to get through here, but in a slightly embarrassing way. Oh, um, just like, what would be really embarrassing? I feel like. And I should say that you don't necessarily get through without causing any damage. You just do manage to get through without destroying the place. Got it. Okay. So, like, oh, what would be embarrassing for Oak? Yeah. It like, might not be embarrassing for Oak. It might yeah. be embarrassing for other people. Uh, yeah, other, other people. people. But it could be embarrassing to Oak in the way that it kind of shines a light on the fact that they're big and slow moving and yeah. not very nimble. I keep looking at a certain like manner that our young lady has, and I'm like, "Ooh, Oka's gonna help with that one at some point." Like, <laughs> could they, could they just like fart? <laughs> I, I like that. That's our default. <laughs> I like that. Oh my god, this is like toots are the answer to everything. Like you know, they're they're they can't like stand up all all the way. So they're just kind of like maneuvering around and like twisting their body, mm. and in the process, just like like the gas <laughs> needs to be released. I think at one point Oak like sucks in their their gut or whatever to squeeze yeah. by, um, and yeah, just this this the sound which everyone stops when they hear it. Um, and, and can it be like super powerful too? So like. Like they're the last one coming in, like following behind, and just like makes a really big fart, and like just like so much force that some of the like the stuff shakes from like <laughs> the cabinets or whatnot. Yeah, I think there's the you pass by a cabinet full of these small, like um, very carefully arranged porcelain statues, um, and then then is as oak farts like the whole cabin everything in the cabin is like shaking and everyone stops moving and cat like spins around and just like holds his breath uh and i think i think cat probably starts giggling at, <laughs> at this point wow that was really impressive <laughs> is that what that was uh yeah sure Im impressive um I mean, could you have done that? I feel like the answer is no. Therefore. <laughs> well, I am capable of many things, but probably not that well or that. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway. Hmm. C keep following. Um, and Cad lead Cad and Sir Stripes lead you on through a number of corridors, which are all full of things. Very expensive, valuable things um, from all across the land, Ifan, you even see things that are clearly from the fairy kingdoms. Mm. Oh. <laughs> can can Cat just like knowingly just being like kind of miffed by the guy, just like touch her hands on the glass, just like kind of like smear her hands <laughs> <laughs> on the glass? A absolutely. Okay. That's what I want to do. <laughs> all right. Do you like touching all the glass 
cabinets yeah. of things, uh, display cases as you're walking by, like leaving these yeah. smudges because your hands are a little bit dirty. I mean, you've been adventuring. Mm-hmm. You've been through the grasping woods and you've got tea and everything. You, you, your hands have a little bit of dirt on them. And so you're leaving that all on the glass cabinets. Yeah. Cat um, mm-hmm. and Sir Stripes, who are leading you, haven't turned around to notice you doing this. Um, <laughs> but you are leaving a nice little trail of smudges behind you. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, Cad, uh, yes, th- what, uh, what amazing savior like things did you do to earn these? And like points at some of the like the stuff on the walls and the things that don't seem like they should be here or belong to this person. Oh, oh, those things, yes. Um, oh, those are from the Emerald, Emerald Queen's court. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you see, one time I was ensorcelled by one of the uh, dryads in the Emerald King Queen's court. Um, and I stayed there for a time. It was quite nice. Um, but eventually, the realm needed me. And I had to go home. And I broke free of the charm. And so you and thought to take precious objects and artifacts from a uh, place that was not your own. Well, I am honoring their treasures. They're perfectly safe here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying is, after we have an adventure, if I take a bunch of things from your house, that's okay, because I was here and I will honor them by putting them in the ditch nearby my house. <laughs> what? No, no, certainly uh, it's not. It's a nice ditch, I swear. Like, <laughs> it's very safe. Very few people go into that ditch. <laughs> uh, he just looks absolutely aghast. Uh, no, no, these are my things. and. You will certainly not be putting them in a ditch. I well, but you just said that that if you go someplace and then you leave, you take stuff from there with you. And that's totally reasonable. So if I just take this, I start grabbing stuff off the walls. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 okay for me to like just have these things now, right? And I'm just holding them up in my hands. That's that's <laughs> how this I'm just trying to understand your explanation here. Is did I get it wrong? And maybe there's a miscommunication. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are definitely mistaken. Ah, young fawn. Okay, um, I put everything on the floor. Sorry oh, about that. No, those things are very, very fragile. Careful. Oh, wait, I, I put them down <laughs> softly on the floor. All right. Okay. Okay. And I like keep walking. <laughs> As you're walking, Sir Stripes is is just sort of looking at you keeping a close eye on Ifon the whole time. I'm going to I'm going to go back to Cat though and like nudge her and be like I feel like he gave us permission to take things. I'm just saying. Oh, I've been slowly sneakily dropping things in Mira's bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor now has a small collection of treasures at the bottom of the of jewels. I don't yeah. remember any of that being there. All right. I'm just gonna like try to like bring my tail like into the tub and just kind of like wrap around everything that's been <laughs> dropped in so you can't just, see it. Just yeah, just to hide it like under your tail. Uh-huh. All right, you can do that. Yeah. Um Cat throws open this large set of double doors, and true enough, there is a throne at the back of this room. Um, you're not sure that the carpet, the plush carpet that goes all the way to the throne was there as part of the original design, um, nor the very soft pillows that are on the throne. Um, but Cad strides right up to the throne, sits on it, and says, well, see, this is this is the control throne. 
And from here, I just need to think about going up to the peak of the mountain. And, and as he says that, the castle moves as you can feel it rising. And then it starts to walk. And there's that just swaying, slow swaying of the whole castle. Do you, do you get used to that? I'm afraid I'm going to lose a lot of water here. <laughs> oh, yes. I've, I've, uh, I've sort of developed sea legs, you could say. And he looks pointedly at Mira, very proud of his joke. Or like land legs? I... So like, well, like yeah, but legs? There was... <laughs> mm. um... I... Yeah, yeah, sure. It was a good joke. And then Sir Stripes just starts laughing. Who are you, me defending my own jokes? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I guess it would take some getting used to. I apologize in advance for any water damage that occurs. Uh, well, it's just water. I'm sure everything will be fine. It dries. It's magic water, but yeah. They're like, yep. Yeah, It'll it'll definitely dry. Oak likes <laughs> picks up the plush carpet and like uses it to like wipe the water. <laughs> it's a, like paper towel, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> puts it uh, uh, that's un unnecessary. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, anyway, we should be there soon. Um, so you, you're really the Rose's child. I, I guess so, yeah. That's, that's me. Wow, that, that's impressive. I mean, do you know that she is a true hero? I I didn't know until I got here. So she's from wherever you come from as well? Yeah. Is she a hero there? Um like you know, there's a lot of different kinds of heroes back in New York. So, like, in in a way, she'd be a, a, a type of hero. Yes. Hmm. Fascinating. I would like to go to this place that you're from, this, this New York. I'm sure there are adventures to be had there. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to go back too. Well, we'll see what we can do. Cat with a K. First we'll find your mother. We'll find the ever blooming rose. And then we'll find your way home. And we'll face down the dragon. That sounds exciting, right? Dragon. Very, very safe for children. Oh, we'll, we'll keep her safe. Right, Yvonne? Right, Oak? She'll she'll be all right. I mean, she's knows? done really good so far. Like, she, she you know, a, a, a tree tried to eat her at one point. She fought that off. And then there were all these guards and people, and she fought those mm -hmm. off. And then she told the... the the Crow King off. He really deserved that. Mm. You told the Crow King off, huh? Yeah. And she, Fabulous. she and she and she kinda helped wake Oak up. Right? I think. Yeah. Well, I, I guess you'll be pretty, fine then. Yeah. She's doing pretty good. Who knows? Maybe the dragon is actually nice and wants some friends. Yeah. Hmm. Or, or, or we just need to, like, have a party with them. Everyone likes a party, and then that's how you make friends, and then we'll all be friends, and then we'll have a dragon friend. That'd be great. 
Yeah, this is going to go perfect. I'm, I'm, I can see you've all done this before. Excellent. Hey. Anyway, uh, we're about as close as we're going to get to the peak, at least from the castle. From here, we have to go on foot. Okay. Well. <sighs> so... Are you all prepared? So stripes. Lower the drawbridge, and you the the castle sort of you know you can tell it's sitting it lowers, um, and all your stomachs sort of lurch a little bit at the movement, and Sir Stripes runs off. Wait, wait. Though so you you mentioned, are we prepared? And like, if uh, do you have anything to prepare us with? Do you have any? And like, Ivan points to Cat. Um, young knight-sized armor. Perhaps, or or even padding, or you know, to a shield. To yeah, a shield would be great. Oh well, I have a shield, um, but I'm afraid it would it would definitely be too heavy for young cat. I I don't have children around here very often. It's very you know, there's there's a lot of fragile things here and sharp objects, and I'm not very good with kids. Ooh, ooh. Sharp objects. Give one of those to Cat. That's perfect. Oh, uh, I I really don't think that's a very good idea. I think it's a great idea. A knife. <laughs> young... <laughs> what do you got there, Cat? <laughs> yeah, I, young ladies should not have weapons. Mm, um, says who? Well, says me, the hero Cat Diamond. Is there some sort of like blunt object in the room? <laughs> um, uh, yes, there there is a blunt object in the room. That blunt object is like a a small bust statue of like a mm -hmm. head, someone's head. Yeah, I I pick it up and I throw it against one of the cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a loud shattering of things. There's glass that shatters. There's objects that shatter. And Kat's like, what on earth are you doing? I, I stare straight, straight at him. And I'm just like, if you don't give me a sharp object, <laughs> I will find my own. And just like, and just like, straight looks at him <laughs> like a i love that that cat just like went <laughs> totally off like um but also this is, i think you're breaking one of the manners because one of the manners <laughs> is young ladies must always respect others opinions and I, I think you're quite disrespecting cat's opinion on whether you should have sharp objects i think cat's just been like young ladies have been like like being told what what she's supposed to be doing and she's like i've had enough just like yeah she's, she, she's like breaking right now okay so give give me a roll um just two dice 2d6 if there, it doesn't are, go are well we to help are we allowed to help with this well, i was gonna say if if it if it goes poorly each of you have an ability that oh, you can to help allow a roll. that's what it is okay sorry i got i got two threes i got Oof. six so each of you does have each of the companions has a move where you can help in some way if it's applicable. Uh, like the the ogre, like Oak has mm -hmm. role when you yeah. help the girl create space for her voice and actions, which could yeah, apply that's... here. Okay. I would like to do that. Okay. okay. Um, so how tell tell me how Oak is helping create like a space for Cat or or helping her be more of a presence. I like use my arms to kind of like be a bouncer and stop like uh like from anyone trying to stop cat from doing what she wants to do so, so you're just sort of putting yourself between her and yeah. like cat diamond and yeah so just like cat put myself. backs up um as you put yourself in between them and give me another roll and add one to it is it just one die or you re-roll and you get to add plus one to whatever you Okay. Yep. Whatever you roll. Eight. Okay. Um so tell me, you, you mm -hmm. do succeed. 
So you have you've refused to mind your manners, and you basically are going to get a sharp object. Um, <laughs> but in the process, somehow Cat goes a little too far, perhaps. Um, now she's she's has all this confidence from Oak backing her up here. I mean, mm -hmm. he's just kind of made her feel really powerful. Um, so what does what does Cat do that sort of she goes a, a little too far in asserting uh, her authority here. A little too far. A little? A lot? I mean, uh, I that's up like... to you. <laughs> it could be a lot. <laughs> I feel like we've already, already went to a little too far with the well, throwing the bus through the cabinet. Um, you, you like started it too far. <laughs> yeah. And now we're going to keep going. I mean, it, it can just escalate. More things can be broken. Um, like okay i i got it it's like um so cat's kind of like just like had enough of it and she's like you know what young ladies aren't supposed to have sharp objects you know what else young ladies aren't supposed to do they're not supposed to start fires and so she goes <laughs> <and looks over. laughs> a matchbox and just like I, I think you have a matchbox in your little bag of, of secrets yes. of mm -hmm. things that you've kept. Um, yeah. it's, it's actually from someplace back in New York um, that you acquired. And you definitely were not supposed to have it, but nobody knows about the things that you keep in your little pouch of secrets. Yeah. Um, so what do, what do you light on fire? So like, um, like. There are um, little like flags Oh, okay. Room. That that sounds wow. like uh, a good place to start. Uh, <laughs> so you just yeah. you just strike a match and light it on you know, hold it underneath one of these flags and the flag starts to catch fire. And and catch what, what what are you doing? What is ah what is this what children do? Stop, <laughs> stop her. And then she just like she stares at him and she's like, I want a sharp object. All right, all right, fine. Um, control your child, please. Um, don't burn down the castle. We're still in it. And there's like, <sighs> and I think I think you got your point across. Okay, and then uh, she's like, "Oh, can you please put this out?" And so Oak just swings his arms, his arm, and just like tries to like stamp it out but kind of like leaves a handprint in the wall at the same time. <laughs> yeah i think you smash the flag against the wall and there's just like this large handprint in the wall mm -hmm. oh 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 ah, great um and just at that point sir stripes comes back into the room and says uh the this drawbridge is down what oh what some something happened here uh and cad looks at him and just says uh stripes just Give the girl your sword. And Stripes is like, uh, are, are you certain about that? Cat says, oh, just give her your sword, Stripes. And Stripes takes out this small, it's, it's mainly like a long dagger. Um, it's a sword to a two foot tall cat. Um, it's just a, like a rapier. It's a sharp pointy sword um, and just hands it to Cat. Hilt first. I'll be be careful with that. <sighs> All right. Onward we go. Um, does does that does that manner get to change? <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Oh yes. Since, yes. Since, is it is it now about <laughs> setting fires? Because. Um, it does change to a belief. That's Wait, up to you what you want to change that belief to. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I There's what, nothing wrong what with a that? little arson. What did we just learn from that? So, I, I, like, maybe if we're staying positive, it's something like sometimes you have to. Like, sometimes you have to make things happen for yourself, or like. Um, <laughs> I'm trying Create to think your of own opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of how to put this nicely because it was desperate it times. Yeah, it was, it was for desperate measures. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not bad. Yeah, because it was young ladies must always respect others' opinion, but it became 
Cat sets fires to get knives. <laughs> like, Set fires, get knives. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good lesson, actually. <laughs> I pretty don't good. know if that belief will come up again. No, yeah, that, it, it but, should be it should um, be something more general. Um, but the, like desperate times call for desperate measures could be. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad. Um. Yeah. Uh. Everything burns. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the way you said that too, it's just extra creepy. Yeah. That Everything was, burns. That Everything was a little burns. bit a little bit spooky. <laughs> Fine. Sometimes you need to like, the belief is just fire like, good. Fine. <laughs> or it's like sometimes you need to like something about like disregarding people's opinions something mm, like that because it was about opinions yeah, yeah. sometimes you need not, to... all, not all opinions are valid <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's not wrong that, yeah you that could be your belief it's... not all opinions are valid uh because about... i mean you did also see that cat has some bad opinions about a number of things <laughs> yeah that's true yeah he's kind of a what about Oof. what were you gonna say let me i was gonna say like don't let people tell you who you are Ooh. That could work. You want to do that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's better than casual arson. <laughs> <laughs> casual arson. I love that we still have a belief on here. Try your best to be helpful. <laughs> hey, she <laughs> helped herself to that knife. Yeah. A lot has and, changed. And to be fair, oh, I, guess, fair. I guess they, they haven't. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> I was I was gonna like try and make it arguable that it was along the lines of always stand up to bullies, but I guess they haven't. We haven't. We can assume uh, they're more like a thief. <laughs> like they're more of a, a douche. Yeah, they're more <laughs> of just a general general crap human. You know, you know. Yeah. Yes, you do. They're not quite a bully, but they're not yeah. good either. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I like I like the classification general crap human yeah they're just a <laughs> general crap human you know you there know are, the one I mean. there are those <laughs> like oh yes all right so we've established your new belief and um cad very pointedly hurries you out of the throne room um with the smoldering smoking flag and the handprint in the wall um past the broken cabinet of shattered objects, um, out through the hallways with smudged glass display cases, which Cat finally notices this time around. And <laughs> looks at Cat like as you pass by each one that has like dirty fingerprints and smudges on them. Uh, okay, all right. And he leads you out to the drawbridge and um, you all descend out of the castle. Um, you are on the end of a narrowing path uh, circling around the uppermost reaches of this mountain peak. Um, the wind here is, is cold and, and whipping around the mountain. Um, the cat says, well, this is as far as the castle can go, but the dragon's lair, I'm told, is not too far from here. So on we go. Prepare yourselves. Now that you have your child with a sword, I'm sure this can only go well. You're right, because now she can protect herself better. This is great. Yes, exactly. this is fantastic. Yes. I'm glad we agree on something. I, like, slap yeah. them on the back. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, yeah, let's go. Dragon time. Right, cat? Let's go. Mm. And you all proceed to the dragon slayer, and we are going to take a short break here before we go into the dragon's lair. What? <laughs> dragon! It's dragon time. Hey, don't go anywhere, y'all, because we're about to go visit a dragon. All right, we're going to go get a drink, so take care of you. We'll be right back. Woo oh, hello there. How's it going? How was your break? Ours was lovely. We got serenaded. 
It was it amazing. Did. Let me sing a, a song. <laughs> um. <laughs> so we have to get Lemmy into a game where she plays some sort of character that sing songs i'm i'm I, that's why i said i was like i'm i i want to give up the font and give it to lemmy because the font has a bunch of moves that require mute like literally i i did one where i did a rhyme because that's all i can do um <laughs> yeah so like like the the so like i have magic that you can do magic by coming up with songs or rhymes and i just feel like that should be yours uh i also have one i haven't moved yet where you um do magic via song and dance as well. I have multiple song and dance magic. You should do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to like what? bust out the ukulele next time. <laughs> Anyone who has watched any of Jess's streams in the past knows that Jess will randomly break into song and dance. It's not the same. Just... <laughs> yeah, when you have to do it, it does, doesn't happen. But uh, If you missed last night, so last night we played uh, Fair Winds and Following Seas, which is a really cute little indie game. You can check it out over on itch.io. Um, if Dustin's in the chat, Dustin put the command in for fair winds and following seas, but literally every time you do a scene, you have to complete the scene by singing a sea shanty. And That's like so the fact that we had to do it on command, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I was like, <laughs> the, the, like there's a complete difference between my nonsensical songs that I sing while I'm playing video games or do, or <laughs> doing crafts or things. And I just versus being directed to sing an actual song. <laughs> there's a huge difference and i couldn't do it it was very it was very sad <laughs> everyone else was amazing and we it took us the whole time of playing the games and 12 times of going through the verses of the sea shanty before we were finally able to line up because you're supposed to as you um unfold and do it you sing more and more of the sea shanty together you sing like the final line of the shanty together and so because our timing was all off with all of us and we had no way to pace and we didn't have a thing and there wasn't a set song we eventually decided that the trick is just to take the last word in the verse and sing it as long as possible so that eventually everyone meets there <laughs> <laughs> that's the trick so now you know the true <clears throat> trick to, to singing sea shanties together which maybe like okay, let's let's go fight a dragon and see if they'll sing a song with us now. <laughs> yeah, well we'll see. I don't know about the dragon singing songs, but uh, all right, so we're back. Um, the f five, six of you, actually five of you, because Sir Stripes is gonna stay at the castle. No, He's Sir Stripes. Oh, I mean, Sir Stripes just He's gave his one. sword to. But to, but uh, but that's just because Cat is being a cat and should give should give. Sir Stripes a different there's enough weaponry in that house that has been stolen that I'm sure Sir Stripes could find something to wield. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, also, doesn't Sir Stripes have claws? Sir Stripes does have claws. And but, armor? Uh oh uh, yeah, some armor. They're at they're at they have somewhat of an advantage over some of us. <laughs> That's true. I uh, got a bathtub. Yeah. I can't even walk. <laughs> it's yeah. gonna be great. <laughs> Sir Stripes does grab a kitchen knife and slides it into their belt um, and does follow along. Um, so the six of you leave the castle and you are following this. It's not so much a path. It's a slightly cleared area. It's kind of narrow. You can only really walk one at a time. And Oak has to sort of carefully press themselves against the mountain as they're walking this narrow path. Um, Ken says, just everyone be careful. Um, don't fall. Stay on the path. Um, Oak, especially you. It gets uh, kind of tricky up here. But um, if the legends are true, the lair is, is just up ahead. Right, so... Are we all ready? Cat, you have your sword. I I should ask, is Cat being passed to anybody? Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely want to pass her. Um <laughs> Who who wants to take Cat? I can take her. Okay. Once I finish my rice cake. <laughs> <laughs> hey. A strong belief of the girl. All young ladies must snack. <laughs> Always snacks. Yeah. 
It's important, okay? I think that probably is a manner that like corresponds to I'm that. I'm sure there's list. something. I'm sure we could find something. You know how many snacks are in that secret pouch? So many Just snacks. So many snacks. <laughs> you know how you know how many snacks this baby can hold? <laughs> this bad boy can fit so many snacks. <laughs> There's just like snacks and matches and who knows what else in there. Shiny rocks. All sorts of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So you you pass along the uh, curve on the mountainside along this path. And up ahead, you do see this large cave opening in the mountain. Cad stops and whistles and says, Wow, well, that looks promising. Is the, the dragon's in there? I mean, if I were a dragon, I think that's where I'd probably be. Mm -hmm. do, you, do, you, do you want to go check? Uh, we're all going to go check. Definitely um, not leaving without uh, Oak here. Oh. Yeah, Oak's good. Right, Oak? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're good. But, yeah. I mean, you're you're the most well-protected and you're the, the bravest. None of us are heroes. Oh, yes. So you should probably go check first and then we'll, Famous. we'll be here supporting you. Famous adventurer. Clearly, that means I. Evan is like shoving them forward, <laughs> shoving him forward. You. Oh, none of us know it as well as you. You are clearly the expert here. You should definitely, definitely step foot in that mysterious cave first. Go oh, on. Uh, well, um, I mean, you're you're quite right. I I am the hero, and I do this sort of thing all the time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, totally believe you. Go ahead. Oh, uh, sir, sir Stripes, do you have the lantern? And Sir Stripes sort of rummages in a bag that they're wearing, um, pulls out a lantern, and lights it. Yes, yes, I have the lantern here. Good. Um, can you go up ahead with the light, just to make sure I can see where I'm going? Um, sure. Yeah, OK. And Sir Stripes sort of nervously steps up ahead with this lantern uh, into the opening of the cave and casts some light in there in the darkness, um, but not enough that you can even see the walls of, of the cave around uh, Sir Stripes. And um, Cad pulls his sword and pulls the shield off of his back and follows oh. behind Sir Stripes. Oh, he gets a sword and shield. <laughs> well, he is the hero. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right. And the two of them sort of go into the cave, and the light starts to receive, recede from the opening of the cave, and you, you see Cad turn back to the group of you and sort of wave you forward. Yeah, Cat's got her sword, and she's like, I'm going, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> like, right up in front. Yeah, okay. I, if, um... I think I think Ifan would like to make sure that there's some of us like around, you know, like beside and behind Cat to make sure she's as safe as possible. And we've already sent that dummy. I mean, the hero on ahead. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I, I think in particular, Oak is probably protecting Cat. Um, but yeah, the, the three of you are sort of surrounding Cat as Cat forges up ahead, but still staying behind Cat. Yeah, um, Mira is probably like in the back, slow going. Oh, okay. In a bathtub in a cave. Okay, then Ethan so, will be beside Cat. Then right. Oak's on the other side of Cat, holding her hand. Oh, which is this tiny this. hand She's and like, like this big hand. I love it. I love it. Cat is like fully <laughs> surrounded by all her new friends. Um, you enter oh. the cave, and it is this huge, open, echoing space. Um and it descends farther than you can see into the darkness. It's warm in here, like this oppressive sort of dry heat in this cave, which is striking when you come in from the cold wind of the mountain. Cad turns back to you and says, I suppose I should have asked this before, but none of you have dealt with a dragon or any sort before, right? 
Uh, no. I mean, I, uh, I don't know if you remember, but back in your castle, I, I just barely knew a song about them. That was, that's the extent of my experience with dragons. I mean, I mean they, we, we've tried inviting them to our parties before, but they've never come. I mean, I've seen, like, sea monsters, but not, not dragons. Obviously, they don't really live in the water. Fair and Kat's like, and Kat's like, I'm, there are no dragons in New York. Hmm. A kingdom without dragons. That's, that's another point in favor of this New York place. Oh, well, there's a lot of other scary stuff in New York, just no dragons. I would still like to visit it. I'm <laughs> sure I could help out. And also take all their things. <clears throat> that's fine. What was that? Nothing. No, sorry, I just had a cough in my throat. Sorry, I just... <laughs> it's the mountain it's, air. Yeah, it's, you know, this cave, it's just kind of damp and like... <sighs> okay, well... Total before... schmuck! <laughs> sorry. It's just really, right? it's just really in... Sorry, sorry. I, you know, I come from a forest. It's just very different. I apologize. <laughs> and Sir Stripes is sort of chuckling. <laughs> um... <laughs> Kets are all right then. Um, so a bit of a plan here. Uh, dragons are very greedy, or so the legends say. Um, if they don't think the dragon's going to want to part with the ever blooming rose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, also, we're not especially quiet. And look over, look over at the the giant ogre and the bathtub clomping, <laughs> clompy bathtub feet. I don't know what you're talking about. And then also, actually, I guess Ifan has hooves, so they're also extremely <laughs> not like what, 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 what do you mean? We're not quiet. <laughs> also, Ifan is just not quiet. What <laughs> do you mean? We're not quiet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You've just been coughing this whole time. Yeah, that's true. Um, but uh, Kat says, I think maybe our plan should be to go in and perhaps charm the dragon or at least distract them while we uh, make off with the ever-blooming rose. That, that seems like a good idea. I, I mean, I've been known to be quite charming if I need to be. Excellent. We can have you talk to the dragon then. Oh, I thought we were all going to talk together. No, that's fine. Well, we'll, that's... we'll go in together, but... That's fine. Yes. Of course. Oak, um, kind of like... It's like... Kind of uncomfortable at this point. It's like... I don't like stealing... Well, well, we're specifically trying not to steal, preferably. We're definitely uh, hoping to come to some sort of arrangement where either they give it to us, or also, if you don't, if you recall, I did say, I think it would be great if we could make friends. Friends help friends out. So maybe if we be friends with them, and then we help them out, and then they'll help us out and give us the rose. And maybe, maybe even if they just find out that the rose is actually a mother... Yeah, maybe if I just like tell them that it's my mom and they'll let they'll let us leave. Yeah, with her. Let's let's hope for that. That's that's the first part. That's the first plan. But we, yeah, we're only gonna have to s steal it if we if we really have to. But yeah. but I don't. I hope we don't have to. Okay. Ed says, uh, "Yes, we are definitely not going to steal anything." I'm a hero, not a thief. Um, yes, yes, no stealing, for sure. De de no. That is a good lesson in general, not stealing things. <laughs> I, I've never stolen anything in my entire life. Okay, I let's have... go. <laughs> All right, yes, let's go. And he, he casts a quick look over at Sir Stripes, and Sir Stripes sort of looks nervously around, and, and they you lead ahead with the lantern. Um, <laughs> the cavern slopes downward, and as the cavern starts to slope, 
you start to notice things that catch the light of the lantern. Coins, and sometimes semi-precious gems that are lying on the cavern floor. Also bones. <laughs> Lots of bones that have been like licked clean. Also bones. Also just bones. <laughs> you know, just general bones. Just... Just, you know, how sometimes... Standard assortment of bones. Yeah, you know how sometimes you go into a cave and one of those normal cave features, just bones! bones. Yes, absolutely. And and you can see that Cad's demeanor sort of changes at first when you're catching the light on gems and coins. Uh, their eyes sort of light up. And then they notice the bones. And there's just an audible swallow, <laughs> like a gulp. Gulp. <laughs> Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. All right, I think we're getting close. Mm-hmm. And as Cad says that, you hear a voice that comes from deep within the cave say, Someone has come to my home. Does someone wish to be a meal? And the Not whole if... cavern rumbles. Did, did we bring <laughs> snacks? Can we... Wait. Catholic. We're we're not here to be eaten. Then Please. why? And as the, the, the word why sort of stretches out, suddenly at the edge of the lantern light, you see a large eye. It's like an orange <laughs> eye. Um and then you see a snout and a long face and a serpentine neck as it comes into the light, this massive dragon's head uh, with these golden scales. Then why are you here? Um, we're looking for my mom. She's a flower right now. <sighs> what would I have to do with your mother? Especially if she's a flower. Um, you have? You have her? Someone said? It's a rose that always blooms. And it's my mom. The dragon lets in this big, like, sniffing inhale. Um, and sort of the head just trails over all of you. Fawn. Is this a fairy trick? No, no, we are here for completely legitimate reasons that um, uh, my friend here has expressed to you. Uh, we don't know how her mother came to be a flower, but she is in fact a flower, and we were told that you have her, and we would like to try and find an amicable way to to return her to her mother, ple- to her child, uh, those approximate things. Why would I help any of you? And Cad speaks up for a moment and says, Well, I am I am the hero adventure, Cad Diamond. Uh, surely you've heard of me. And the dragon just snorts. Hmm, no. And Cad sort of looks a little bit crestfallen. Well, I, I guess you have been in a mountain for some time, and my legend just didn't happen to reach you here. But um, you definitely want to help this young child, right? I mean, they're cute or something. And Dragon just looks, the snout just comes down to cat's level, uh, almost on the ground, and sniffs cat and as the dragon exhales, there's just this wind that blows Cat's braided hair back. And it smells sort of like charcoal. Kind of like the matches that you <laughs> lit, the, lit the flag on fire with. <laughs> this seems like a trap. Oh, no. No, it's not... It's not a trap. I just want my mom 
back. And Mira's like, um, perhaps we can reach some sort of a, a deal. If you do have, if you do have the flower, um, perhaps there's something by way of, of trade, or maybe there's something we can help you with and in exchange we can um, procure or gain possession of, of the girl's um, flower mom. <laughs> help? Ridiculous. My kind have only been hunted by your kind. And when the dragon says that, they're specifically looking at Cad. Oh, my God. Uh, okay. Um, I was going to say. <laughs> no, they're not looking at the mermaid or the fawn or the ogre. They're looking at Cad. Ifan punches Cad in the shoulder. Like, not like viciously, <laughs> but just like, mm, this is your fault. Like, I haven't hunted any dragons before. I don't, I don't know. Um, we're not. Obviously, my, my people have done no ill will to you. We're, I'm simply here to help the girl. Um, is, is there truly nothing you want? I just want to be left alone as I have been. I am the last of my kind. That's, that's, that's really sad. I mean, I think, go ahead. Yeah, so I think Kat puts her sword and she's like, are you lonely? Why do you want to be left alone? Because the people hate me. They see me as a monster. So I stay here in my cave where I'm safe. But maybe if you leave the cave and show people that you're not a monster, you can have friends. Yvonne said that they tried to invite you to some parties before. Yeah, didn't you get our invitations? No. Oh. And I don't do parties. Oh. That's understandable. I do have the rose that you seek. Oh, great. Can we have it? Yeah. If No. Oh. Um maybe we can trade you for it. We have some things of intermediate value. There or maybe a fine kid uh, sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was gonna say we could do something exciting, but they just said they hate parties and they want <laughs> to be left alone. So I feel um, like I'm at an extreme disadvantage with my type of magic here. Can I use Weary Traveler to see if I can find, if I can because it seeks secrets and hidden treasures, can I see if I can like see the rose in this in this space? Sure. Give me a roll for that. That is a nine. Okay, so um, you will find the rose, or you will see it. Um, but what is, you have to ask me, what is keeping me from recovering it? I'm going to so, go with the dragon. Yeah, <laughs> yes, but more specifically, um, you, you peer deeper into the cave past the dragon, which is difficult for you to do because the dragon is quite large and intimidating. Um, everyone else is fixated on this dragon's like snout, huge snout, um, but you're looking past it down this dragon's body and the lantern light is glistening off of its golden scales. And you see down by its tail, this tail is wrapped around a uh, pe pedestal. Mm -hmm. Um, the very end of its tail is wrapped around the pedestal, and on top of the pedestal, there is standing a rose. Like a base. Like Beauty and the Beast style. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. So you see it there, but the dragon's tail is wrapped around the pedestal. Um, so if you want to be left alone, we can leave you alone, but um, one, one moment, and I... <laughs> And I'm gonna like un 
curl my tail and like start trying to figure out what is in this bathtub <laughs> and be like um i've got some and just like scoop them out and like hold up whatever cat was able to like sneak into the tub like perhaps any of this would be of trade there are like rings and bracelets and there's a small statue um and you sort of lift them out of the water The dragon's just looking down at them very skeptically. Um, and then you hear a voice coming from farther into the cave. Cat? Cat, is that you? Mom? Yes. And the dragon just sort of rears back a little bit. Can I? Is there, so like the voice is coming from further in the cave. Is there any way that I can like move towards it or is the dragon just like completely blocking everything? Uh, well, the, you you could move towards it, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to start, like, walking towards where the voice is coming from. Mom? Cat. And you, you walk into the darkness, and, and Cat starts to reach out for a moment. He's like, is this such a... Uh, um, all right, all right, you you go down to the dragon. Sure, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> and you walk farther into the cave, and the dragon's head sort of curls to follow you. Um and you're searching around for this voice, and you realize it's coming from the rose. I'm gonna walk up to it as close as I can get with the dragon's tail wrapped around it. Mom? Cat, how, how are you here? No, how, can we, can we fix you? How do you not be a flower anymore? Well, the, there was a curse. The Crowing King betrayed me after I, I saved the kingdom. Yeah. I'm... The, the rest of me is imprisoned in ice in the Crowing King's castle. Oh. He doesn't like me very much. The Crow and King doesn't like anyone very much, Cat. How? So if we if we get the rest of you out of ice, then will you be fixed? The curse could be broken, but how how are you going to do that, Cat? I don't know. I'll figure it out. I have friends who are smart. And the, the dragon sort of lowers its head down to Cat's level again. So this big giant eye is looking straight at Cat and says, You may not take her. Oof. And then Ro Rose speaks up and says, Well, Salona, this is my daughter, Cat. And Salona, the dragon, but you must stay. Keep me company. If you leave, I will be alone here in this cave. What, what if we go and help her and then we can come back after that and we can visit and spend time with you so you're not alone? What if you were to fail this mission? We won't, though. You are just a child. No, I'm 12. And I have friends who are strong. <laughs> you are 12. I am 1,200 years old, child. Well... 
going to rescue my mom. The dragon curls its neck around to look at the pedestal and the rose sitting on it. Rose, is this what you wish? And the rose speaks and says, Cat came a long way to find me. Yes. This is what I wish. But Salona, maybe you don't have to stay in this castle or in this cave. Maybe you don't have to be alone. What do you mean? Maybe you can help them. Maybe if you help them, you can return to the kingdom. Um, all of us here are, are willing to be friends with you. And um, I mean, even if you don't like parties, you know, we, you know, we know a really nice tea spot um, that we could hang out or just one person. If you prefer just hanging out one person, I see that that's kind of your thing and that's totally understandable. Um, and, you know, if you if you help us, you'd be helping your good friend Rose here. Be, be back with her daughter and be making some new friends and maybe be, um, you know, just, uh, we'd really appreciate it. And, um, you know, kind of, I, I don't mean to be rude, but the only songs we knew about you were kind of bad and scary. And then maybe we could have happy songs about you instead, um, you know, and people would, would know how great and wonderful and kind you were. And, and then, and that'd be, that'd be really nice, right? Happy songs? Yeah. Hmm. You know, like, oh God. <laughs> I once knew a dragon and she was pretty great. We became friends. And then we danced a lot. That's all I got. Listen, I, you can't just put me on the spot like this. It's, it's really <laughs> difficult. I'm not, um, I'm not really known in my, in my, my group for being the best singer, but just do it because it's nice sometimes. Yay. You just hear this like, there's a snorting sound. Of, <laughs> and, and there are little cinders that come out of the dragon snout, which you think might be a laugh. You're not really sure. Um, yeah, you know? Um, and you know, uh, 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 the, there's people in my, in, in my, in my, um, where I come from, who are much better at making songs than me. And they'll make a nice song for you. Not just like, not like that one. <laughs> What if they try to hunt me or attack me? As you said, there are scary songs about me. Mm. Well, we won't let them do that. I'm a princess, so I have a certain amount of pull. So um, we, we can make sure that everybody knows that you're not to be harmed and um, Mr. Diamond here is a big time famous hero, so clearly his word is worth a lot if you were to say that everything was all right. Right, Cad? As you mentioned, Cad, uh, sort of, no one had been paying much attention to Cad. Oh my this whole god. Time. Um, <laughs> and the, the dragon's eyes turn towards Cad, and the rest of you turn towards Cad. And Cad looks up from shoving something in the pouches. Uh, that uh, his pouches that are at his waist and then you hear like jingling noises oh uh, what what hmm? someone said my name seriously oh uh, can you like you know oh <laughs> picks him up by the foot and just kind of like shakes him out ah like... <laughs> oh, unhand me and as you're shaking him out, like stuff just starts falling out of those pouches, coins and gems, and uh, maybe like a chalice, golden chalice falls out, clanks Thank on the you, ground. Luke. Thief. Yes. Um, um, 
Um, sorry, sorry. Um, m may I call you, uh, was it Salona? Yes, Salona. Salona, hi, it's nice to meet you. I'm Yvonne. Um, uh, if, in case we hadn't already introduced ourselves, this is Mira and Oak, and you've already met Kat, and, um, ignore that guy, his name is Cad. But, 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 uh, Sir Stripes is very nice. Um, Sir but... Stripes is waves. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you worry about being thought of as scary, and I admit that there's some scary songs out there about you, but, I mean, um, some people might find Oak scary, but Oak is actually very nice, and Oak would never do anything bad, and we all know that Oak is wonderful and lovely, and, 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 you know, um, Oak is only here to help, and if, if you come out and, and show people you're nice, like Oak has shown that they're very nice, then people will know. And you know that you you can you can control your own narrative, um, and also um, we uh, we we'd be happy to help you with that. Oak, um, <laughs> Oak, <laughs> this is stupid. Uh, Oak says, "Get a job. <laughs> Employee <laughs> benefits can't be hunted." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. There's a, um, you know, real bet. <laughs> Good job benefits. For that. <laughs> <laughs> the dragon, like, the dragon doesn't really have eyebrows, but just like where it's the ridge above its <laughs> eyes, just where one of them raises. You Why? would be a good manager. Salona so looks over at Cat. Um, who's been a little bit quiet. Um, you are just a child, the child of a hero. But I just see a small girl. Why should I endanger myself, risk my life, risk the one thing that means anything to me? for a small child. Child, you should go home. And well, the dragon just sort of tower, like a snout is just hanging over Cat. Yeah, I think Cat's gonna like stand up like straight down like that. Well, you're upset because people think a bad way about you because of how you look. And you're thinking a bad way about me because of how I look. And that's not fair either. So what if we both just trust each other and I can say that that I can help my mom and I'm brave and I'm strong and I have friends who will help me and you are not big and mean and scary. You don't have to be what other people say you are. Hmm. And actually, you have a belief called don't let people tell you who you are. Yeah. So I hey. think this is actually a move that you just triggered. Um, so I think this is a stand strong in your convictions move. Yeah. Um, so you can add, basically, you start out with one die and you add an initial die for each belief that applies. We know one applies. Um, All right. Okay. Alright. That's a ten. Double fives. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you you are having this little speech towards Salona the Dragon. Hmm. You are wise, child. I've been afraid. I am, as far as I'm aware, the last dragon. Maybe you're not. Perhaps. But that fear has kept me here in this cave, afraid of that dragons would slip into myth and be forgotten. And in the meantime, I've allowed terrible, frightening songs to be sung about me. I've allowed the crowing king and their 
cowardly minions to define who I am to make me the monster. You're right. Time for me to change that. Yeah. Yeah. Choose your own narrative. (laughs) And I'm gonna give Kat to Jess. Oh, dang it! (laughs) (laughs) Yeah! (laughs) No, that's... (laughs) Somehow, Yvonne has a higher-pitched voice than the 12-year-old girl. (laughs) Whoops! (laughs) How did I do that? (laughs) It's fine. (laughs) You know. (laughs) These things happen. Yeah. Well, if we are going to go to the Crowing King's castle, the fastest way to do that would be by dragon flight. Yeah, I was hoping you were gonna say that. <laughs> we're gonna ride on dragon. We're gonna... We have a new dragon friend. Dragon friend. Sorry. Cat is looking very pale <laughs> in the light. I feel like I feel like you could probably stay here. I was gonna say I feel like you don't have to be invited to this. <laughs> oh well. You've done I've... enough. Yeah, definitely. You should go back to your castle and leave and, and stop, um, you know, because you don't want things to keep accidentally falling into your pockets. That's a real trouble you're having there, I see. Um, so. And as you're saying that, Cat uh, is just putting something back on the ground that was yep. in his pocket. Oh, <laughs> um, right. Um, hmm. Uh, well. You, you got to have some adventure. You got to meet... Thank- yeah, go ahead. Thank you for your services. Mm-hmm. But... You will, you will certainly sing a song about me in this adventure. Oh, there will absolutely be a song about you. And you know what they say about mermaid songs. Oh. Hmm. Right. Uh, well, uh, yes. I guess I should secure the castle and uh, I will make sure that you have backup after you go to the Crowing King's Kingdom. Yes. I mean, I'm not very welcome there right now, but if you were to change things... Uh, Cat cat, um, looks past (laughs) Cad Mm -hmm. and turns to Sir Stripes and is like, oh, if you want to come though, um, you're invited <laughs> to come and help us. We really appreciate all your help so far. Um, you're really a, a, a truly noble knight, Sir, Sir, Scri- <laughs> Sir Stripes. And Sir Stripes sort of looks to Cad, looks to the group, looks back to Cad. Hmm. Yes, I'm going to go. Yay! And <laughs> Sir Stripes sort of like rushes ahead of all of you and climbs onto Salona's neck. Which sort of surprises Salona at first, um, but yes, this brave cat has scurried up, and Salona lowers her head so that everybody can climb aboard. Um, if it's not too much trouble to get a bit of help, Oak picks her up and places her like on top. As as Oak is picking you up, um. You reach out, Cat reaches out and grabs the rose and holds it close. Um, uh, I think Cat. Were you saying Cad or Cat Cat. or which one? I'm sorry, there's too many now. There's there's literally Cat, Cat, and Cad. Cad is leaving the cave at this point. Okay. I mean, he is, he's um, been insured with um, watching the castle which he's now going to do. Okay, good. But Cat has the rose. Oh, Cat has the rose? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay, mom. We're going to we're going to fix this. And Cat goes over and like puts her hand on um Salona. It's like, "Um, thank thank you for helping us. Um, is it okay if I climb on?" You're back? That's all right? Yes, child. Okay, thank you for helping us. <laughs> like, gets up. 
and, and Oak helps Mira and Jules get on the <laughs> dragon, which is a very interesting. I, I think that Oak is probably, when Oak finally climbs on, is sort of holding Jules. Yeah. Um, so, like, Oak has, like, Jules in, like, one arm and is, like, hugging everybody else. Kind of like like a seatbelt, like a big uh, seatbelt. <laughs> That's amazing. And once everyone's assembled on there, um, you see these wings unfurl. And uh, Salona moves her entire large golden body up to the mouth of the cave and then lifts off, taking you all on her back. Flying away from the peak, you see below you the castle, and you see Cad making his way back to the castle along the path. Uh Um, You see the, the peak is receding from your view, and you see below you the grasping wood. Um, the trees, the, the greeny grasping trees all far below you. Um, and then you see the very large tree in the center of the wood where the Crowing King's castle is built into. Mm. And you approach it, and Salona sort of starts to dive down towards it and then puts her rear claws out and just grabs one of the branches Oof. and holds on. And the whole even though this tree is immense, the whole thing shudders under the weight of this dragon. And she, she lets, she breathes in deeply. She says, I could burn this tree. Oh, maybe, maybe don't do that, though. Um, is it, well, was this tree here before the Crowing King? Is it his, it or did he just kind of take it? The Crowing King took it as he takes all things. So maybe maybe leave the tree and we just maybe it's just like you know the tree and this land is just kind of sick and the sickness is the crying king and we just need to cure it with some soup and love <laughs> and you know <Fire. laughs> right with some no not fire not fire not fire this this time not fire <laughs> Not fire. Not yet, anyway. That's like plan F. <laughs> like, it's a little bit further down. Well, it seems we have gotten some attention. And the dragon sort of curves her neck out. And you can see that now all of these, the crow guards that had arrested you much earlier um, are starting to assemble with their halberds. Uh, they look extremely nervous as this dragon is clinging to the side of this castle tree. Okay, so should we just all go in there together? What do you think? And and ask the crowing king to give back my mom? Or... I don't think we ask. I think we tell him okay. that he is going to give back your mother. I, I hold out the rose and I'm like, Mom! Do you know where your body is? It's in the throne room inside. Okay, the throne room. Oak, you know where that is, right? You used to work in there. Oak, you do know where that is. So maybe um, between uh, you, Salona, scaring some of these some of these <laughs> guards out of the way, and, and you, Oak, if you can help clear a path, maybe we can make it to the throne room and get my mom. Yep. Follow me. The, uh, and Oak just like, like just pushes like the guards like, off. just like. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah, I think I think so. The the guards, as you were having this entire conversation, the guards were like, "Halt! Surrender in the name of the Crowing King." But their voices are all a bit shaky as they're saying that, um, and Salona just absently says, "No, I don't think we will." It moves like her large claw and just knocks a bunch of them over casually. Um, and then Oak drops down from Salona's neck uh, with everybody else and just starts shoving the others out of the way. Um, and none of them seem very anxious to confront a dragon. It's valid. <laughs> well, yeah, let's, let's go. go make our presence known. All right, so the the five of you, the 
four of you and Sir Stripes. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> Salona probably can't fit through here. No. I like a cat. Cat puts a hand on Salona. It's like, thank you so, so much. Um, hopefully we'll see you shortly. I hope so. Um, Stay safe. You as well. Okay. And you go into the into the castle. Um, the guards try to stop you, where they put up a brief effort to try to stop you. Um, but every time they do, uh, Oak just sort of pushes, <laughs> slowly pushes them out of the way. And, and Can I, like, push them by their face? Like, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> just like, and they, they protest and they sort of flail against Oak, but uh, that's not very helpful. Um, and Oak just clears a path. And you enter the throne room. And you see sitting on a throne, um, which is itself made of all these twisted on a throne of lies. <laughs> it is. It's it's, <laughs> it's it's similar to the throne that was on Oak's back. It's made mm. out of all these twisted brambles, and there are all these um, shimmering objects that sort of dangle from it. And there is a crow sitting on the throne. And you see in the corner of this throne room, there is a large block of ice. And there's just sort of a mist coming off of it. It's not melting, but the mist sort of sparkles in the air. And you wouldn't have noticed it if you weren't looking for it. But if you peer closely at the ice, you can see it's sort of a form moving. Mom, I go ready. <laughs> Halt! Can I, like, um, are there actual, like, dudes with, like, pole there arms are, trying to yes. cross them and do the traditional, like, can I, like, try and, like, I'm very small. Can I run and, like, <laughs> slide? Actually, can I? Ifan has a power where she, can... sorry, they can grant their shape-shifting magic to others. <laughs> Okay. Can I can I basically bless Cat to like to 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 be able to like prance around these dudes like a little goat? Uh, I want to give her goat yes. magic. Yes, you can. So give me a roll. Goat magic. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Come on. Goat magic. <laughs> roll for goat magic. Oh, not good. I did not succeed at giving goat magic. Well, oh, no. you may have, but it just... so what did, you got a under a six or six under? Yeah, I got under a six. I got a four. Um, so what what form is Cat stuck in? Oops. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> Oops. Uh, so I think Cat gets stopped by you know these guards, and Ifan's like, I can fix this. Let's make you <laughs> smaller and like. Um, just goes to like make her into like a little, like to to bless her with like little goat prancy legs, and instead I think she just makes cat smaller. I I feel like honestly she just like went whomp and like accidentally <laughs> shrunk cat. Okay, like whoops, cat light. So cat yeah. gets shrunk and smaller. Oops. Um, and now the rose that cat was holding is is much larger. Oh no! It's like. <laughs> It's it, you're just like holding on to it, um, but one of the guards just reaches down and scoops you up. This mini cat. Does he do the thing where like I'm holding on to the rose and he picks up the rose and I'm just like you know like cats yeah. just like holding on to it like hey put her down that's my mom stop it. Can Oops. I um can I stand tall? Mm, or like it says uh to step in the way to. To defend the girl. Sure. Give me a roll for that. Oh, one dropped. Hold on. <laughs> Five and a four. It's nine. Nine. Okay. Um. Hmm. So this is this is interesting. So you succeed. Um, so what injury or insult do you shrug off? 
since you're defending the girl, but also you ask the girl, how do I know you want to stand up for yourself? <laughs> so a lot of a lot of what the ogre is about, about yeah. what Oak is about, is that even though you're big, you often feel like bullied, that you're made fun of and um, because you you act and speak slowly. Um, so in defending the girl, you're actually you're you're really sort of standing up for yourself. Um, this tiny cat that you're you're defending. So uh, the the soldier who kind of picks up the rose and cat is, is like dangling off of, like, um, I pick up the soldier and like tap his hand so that he lets go of the rose so that cat can have it back and just like look at the soldier and it's like not okay <laughs> and the soldier just says let me down you big lumbering oaf um and i take him over to the window <laughs> <laughs> well and just like you sure oh no not anymore Put me back in the room. Okay. And I put him back in the room. And and after this whole sort of situation, the crowing king just stands up in his throne and he says, You you are intruders in my court. Troublemakers, criminals. Steal? Oak says, um, you you steal. We are just here to get this girl's mother back. You're the criminal. Who are you to accuse me? And he looks over at the small mini cat and says, You are a pipsqueak child. Do you not know your place in this kingdom? Her place is wherever she wants it to be. It is not. This is my kingdom. You I will not be talked down to by children. You stole it from others. Well, get ready to be talked down to by a tiny child, because <laughs> <laughs> you are a big bully and a meanie. You tried to bully Oak, and when that failed, you're you're trying to bully this whole kingdom, and you're bad for everyone. We're going to get rid of you. You're no good, and you tried to capture my mom, and I'm going to get her back. And I, I'm imagining that, like, cat is approximately the same size as the rose, like is rose height right now. Yep, and probably. literally she has the rose like hefted, like the head of the rose is <laughs> actually, like the flower petal part is actually hefted over her shoulder. She's holding the stem kind of almost across her chest and like to, to, to be able, just to be able to hold it. Um, and it's like, I'm, I'm getting my mom back whether you like it or not. And she like goes, she just like marches tiny form with her rose over towards the body to see if like she could join them back together somehow <laughs> okay so i i think this is a stand strong in your convictions uh, specifically at least using the always stand up to bullies belief yeah um so um, i think I also like also be don't let people tell you who yeah. you are. Yeah, you were going I was going to say that too. Yeah, because okay. they're they're yep. telling me I can't do anything because I'm like little and I'm extra little right now and I'm extra extra annoyed. About <laughs> okay, so roll three d six and take the two highest. Give me the okay. Three d six. Um. Okay. <sighs> Oof. Um. Oh. Eh. That's a nine. Nine. Okay. So. Um, you do overcome the challenge, but what uh -huh. price does the challenge cost you? So as you're making your way, the, the, the crowing king says, guards, stop this this pipsqueak. <laughs> and the guards all sort of, they are not afraid of a tiny girl, a tiny, tiny girl. Um, and they start to advance on you, but somehow you get through them, but there's a cost involved. Um, gosh, okay, so I... Gosh, I'm like, what, it, what, what? Maybe, maybe I, maybe they catch me like right before I get to her. 
And once again, I'm still tiny, so they do that thing where they, like, pick me up. And I'm like, no, no! And I'm fighting them, but I manage to, like, uh, mom! And, like, just manage, despite the fact that they have me, I do manage to also... I still have the rose, and I'm trying to... I'm touching my mom and trying to figure out how to get her out, but they also do have me in hand, so it's kind of a little bit of both. Okay. So you touch the rose to the ice. Um, as you're struggling to escape the guards that have picked you up. Um, and as soon as you do, you hear your mother's voice. Cat. And then the ice block starts to rapidly melt. And there's water spreading along the floor, and the guards start to slip and stumble um, and step back because this block of ice is rapidly melting. Uh, and they drop you, Cat. You sort Ouch. of fall to the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's a it's a bit of a long fall for someone so tiny. Um, you you sort of land on your butt on the floor in this water. Ouch. Um, so now you're soaking wet too. Um, but the ice block is melting. Mom, is... <laughs> like try to get around. Um, I think Cat's gonna try and um get between. Oh, I was gonna say like get between her mom and the. Crowing King, but sorry, what does the Crowing King say? The, the Crowing King leaps off of the throne, mm. flaps his wings, um, and dives down to try to snatch up the rose. It's no! The ground, can I swat him? You can, you can certainly try. Um, yeah, and I want to try to, well, if Oak's like trying to keep the Crowing King away, I want to try to like get Jules to walk over so I can like scoop it up. Okay. Uh, so probably stand tall roll? Yeah. Him. Oh, no. Four. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, this is fun. So. <laughs> Always good. <laughs> with, with a four for that roll, you're, you're supposed to ask me, what bigger threat have I missed? Oof. Um, boy, I think I think that um, you you dive forward to sort of swat the crowing king out of the way. Um, the crowing king is faster than you expected, though, especially compared to you, Oak. And the crowing mm -hmm. just ducks underneath your arm, um, and then the crowing king waves a familiar wand at Oak. Oh, no. It says, Ogre, know your place. And Oak, your horn starts to shrink back <gasps> into your head. And you feel unable to move. And the Crowing King just sort of now is landed on the ground waving this this wand at you and scurries forward and snatches up the rose. Mm -hmm. What have oh. you done? All of you. Getting my what? mom back. What have we done? What have you done? I have ruled over this kingdom for five years. More like terrorized from everyone we've talked to. Uh, you're really not a good ruler. You know, ruler should be like for the people. Hmm. This is coming from a fawn. Well, then how about it comes from me as somebody who is a ruler of a kingdom? Well, you wouldn't understand being from your underwater kingdom. Hmm. The people have no jurisdiction in this, no say in this kingdom. All right, then what? what is the use of having the rose trapped in there? What, what benefits does it have for you? What, what do you have to gain? We just want to set her free and send her and her daughter back to their home. He stops, tilts his head in sort of that crow way says you just want to go home uh, 
Um, well, yes, I would like to go home. And I would like to take my mom with me, preferably, and go home. But also, I mean, you seem to be pretty bad for this this whole area. So, you know, you should probably stop that. I don't take orders from children. I wasn't ordering. I was just suggesting. But if you don't listen, I'm pretty sure enough people here don't like you that they're going to change it anyway. Impossible. We have a literal dragon friend. Um, and you know, what? we told her not to burn down your tree, but you know, if you don't listen, she might burn down your tree. Hey. What did you say? Nothing. And then uh right as you say nothing, there is a large cracking and tearing noise. Um, and literally the ceiling of the throne room just starts to peel away. And you see a large golden claw just ripping the ceiling of this room off. And the dragon snout peers in. Yeah, see, uh, that's Salona. And um, they don't really like how you've uh, treated them or this uh, kingdom. So I think you should maybe leave now while you have the option to do so. Uh, oh, um. Hmm dragon yeah guards and the crowing king shots for the guards and you all start to realize now that there are no guards in this room anymore <laughs> they've all fled this is you're making a mistake i i am i am the ruler of these woods I don't think we are making a mistake, because you see, you're a big bully, and we always stand up to bullies. And you might be the ruler, but you're not the rightful ruler. And Salona's snout sort of lowers into the room and looks at the crowing and says, I think that you should leave now. But first, and the claw just reaches down and snatches the the wand out of the crowing king's hand and snaps it between two claws. Yeah! yeah. And Oak's horns start to grow back in and um, you can move. Thank goodness. <laughs> the crowing king starts to back out of the room as the ice is continuing to melt and now you can see your mother uh, standing in this puddle of water. And you hear the voice still coming from the rose. Put the rose in my hand. Um, Oak, a little help, please, says like tiny, tiny cat. <laughs> Oak offers her uh, their hand to cat to stand on. Yeah, so cat has to like climb, like cat heaps the heaps the like giant rose onto the, her shoulder and like climbs up onto Oak's hand. Thank you, Oak. Welcome. As Kat puts the rose in her mother's hand, <laughs> um, there is a flash of red light. And the rose is gone. And Kat is back to her normal 12-year-old size. <laughs> still sitting in, in Oak's large hand. Um, and your mother's eyes open. She steps forward and just gives Cat a huge hug while she's sitting in Oak's hand. Mom! Cat. And the Crowing King just is backing out of the room while everyone is distracted and leaves the throne room. Cat, I, I have so many questions. Uh, me too, Mom. Apparently, you're a hero of this m world? Yeah, that is a long story. And I never really meant to leave you, your brother. Um, but they needed my help here. I understand, but will you, will you maybe come home now? I think, and she, 
Rose looks over to the group of the assembled companions, Oak and Mira, Sir Stripes and Ifan and Salona the dragon. I think maybe this kingdom is in good hands without me. I think so too. And Cat uh, smiles at all her friends. I think, I think, I think they're all exactly what this kingdom needs. I agree. And Rose walks over to Yvonne and says, I think this calls for celebration. Don't you? I thought you would never ask. Oh my God. And like, <laughs> Yvonne like produces musical uh, instruments from who knows where and starts handing Magic. them out to everyone present. <laughs> And uh, it's time to celebrate, people! Come on, come on, come on, come on! And I, I, I would like to roll to wild, wild rumpus, which is which, which is to encourage everyone to engage in boisterous merrymaking. <laughs> okay, make a roll. I don't know if this is. I hope this works. <laughs> I hope this works out too, because. Uh... Oh yeah, I got a ten. Yeah! Nice. Hell yeah! Party roll. Yeah! So I think uh, you you succeed. You pass out these instruments. Everyone is is partying and cheering and celebrating. And the fact that the crowing king has snuck away from the kingdom and is no longer in charge, there just seems to be a a joy that spreads through the kingdom. Um, all the guards that were those wearing those masks, those crow masks before, and start to take them off drop their weapons and start to remove their armor and some of them start to file into the throne room and join the celebration um and they they start the the guards start chanting long live rose long live cat oh are are are, are we like are you like royalty here mom not not royalty in any of official sense they they just remember me um and, well cat, you're cat. the hero now cat yeah i guess so um i think like cat wants to try and get the chant to include all her friends names which is very <laughs> long but like <laughs> she she wants like she knows she couldn't have got here without all her friends, you know what I mean? So she wants the That's chance so to include everyone's, you know, so just be like, yay, Mira, yay, Oak, yay, Sir, Sir Stripes. <laughs> uh, I hip, think it hip, takes hooray! <laughs> it, it takes a little bit of effort, but they do start to, to add in the names of, you know, Oak and Mira and Afan and Salona and Sir Stripes. Um, and Rose turns to all of your companions and says, I think it's time that Kat and I return home. But I think that all of you have found what you're looking for, too. And I trust that you will take care of the realm after we leave. And I think that um, each of you, each of the companions, also had their own things they were seeking. Um, I know that Ifan was looking for a real reason to celebrate. This is a pretty good reason to celebrate. <laughs> you have toppled the crowing king and freed the kingdom and uh, now you are throwing a party. For yeah, it. we're throwing like the biggest party the kingdom has ever seen plus Plus, um, I'm hoping that uh, Salona will come hang out with my friends so that, like, we could make her, like, a proper... S sorry, make them a proper song and uh, really tell the, the real story of how, like, cool they are. And Mira. Mira was looking for a place to call home after spending her life running, basically. <laughs> yeah. And, well, there is now a kingdom that needs someone to rule it. I mean, 
I'd have to make the treehouse a little more accessible. <laughs> that seems like a good quest. <laughs> and uh, Oak, Oak needs to have a voice. Everyone always ignored Oak. Only used Oak for their brute strength. Oak starts a cover band. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, but yes, all, Oak also now has the respect of people. For Oak's entire life, Oak never really, you know, had that. Um, but now you've you've set, helped free the kingdom and save the day, and everyone looks at Oak a little bit differently. Rose turns Yay. to Cat, picks Cat up, holds her in her arms. Says, "I think it's time for us to go home, Cat." Yeah, I, I, I guess so. And then I think Cat realizes for the first time that she has to say goodbye to all her friends. I'm, I'm gonna miss all of you. Thank you so much for all your help. Couldn't have done any of this without you. What do all her friends have to say to the cat as goodbye? Cat, just know that you can always come back and see us if you want. All right? You're allowed to go on as many adventures as you want. Is that true, Mom? <laughs> Well, you have been very brave, Cat. If it weren't for you, I would still be trapped here. So yes, I, I think we'll go on many adventures together. So don't be a stranger. That's an order. Oh, Mom, that's coming from a queen. I have to listen. I think you do. <laughs> what does Ifan say to? Uh, yeah. I think Ifan stops partying for a second to come over to Cat, uh, who <laughs> I feel like every time I feel like Ifan Ifan's magic didn't always work in Cat's favor. <laughs> <laughs> that seems about right though. Uh, so yeah, but Ifan Ifan's like, hey kiddo, don't forget to. Try new things and make some mistakes, and that's okay, because things can still work out even if they weren't exactly like you first imagined. I think you got this. You know. And Kat sort of thinks back to all the things that didn't quite go right along this journey, but still, it, it worked out perfect mm -hmm. in the end. And Rose says, your fawn friend is exactly right. Things are never going to go quite as planned. you have the spirit to stick with it, things will work out. And what does Oak say to Cat as a goodbye? Oh, I think Oak is just gonna like do a really big hug and just like kind of just hold that hug for a little bit. Um, cause there's, they're, they're sad. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's like, thank you for freeing me. Thank you for seeing that I deserved better. Uh, I will miss you. Cat mm, like gives Oak such a big hug and is like, "I'll miss you too." And don't don't forget it. You don't let anyone tell you different, cause cause you're real special and real good, and you deserve lots of good things. And I think you also see that just in the last few moments, as you were saying this. Oak's horns start to grow and flower. Mm. 
Uh, and then uh, I think Oak's going to be um, uses kind of like an inner voice to like sing her a little goodbye. So I like me better when I'm with you. I like me better when I'm with you. I knew when you took a stand, freed me from the crow king's hand. I like me better when, I like me better when I'm friends with you. And then kind of like lifts her up. I, I think that everyone sort of heard Oak sing and Oak's voice is just beautiful. And no one really had heard that or expected it before. Um, it's also the most confident that Oak has ever seemed when they're singing. And you can even see that, that Rose is crying. Song. <laughs> yeah, I think Kat definitely cries <laughs> at that. But like, happy cries that, that Oak um trusted cat enough to share their inner voice with her and i think you see um salona's tail kind of comes into the roof and coils down and just wraps around oak lightly and like oh. a hug and salona's oak. snout kind of lowers down into the room and says yes. i will miss you rose oh You've shown me that I do need to see the world, make the world see me. And now I have new friends to keep me company. And she looks over at the whole group. And Sir Stripes <laughs> just sort of marches up to Cat, says, You gave me a real adventure. And you showed me that I wasn't maybe being my best by following Cad Diamond around. I, I found a better, a more true hero. Well, us cats got to stick together. Yeah. And you, you can be your own hero. I will. And hey, you can keep the sword. <gasps> Mom! <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I'm keeping the sword! Uh, your, your mom, Rose, she says, yeah, I think you deserve that. But hopefully dad will be okay with it. He won't, but... <laughs> we'll work on that yeah. together. <laughs> All right, are you ready to leave, Kat? Yes, yeah, so... Okay, bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Hopefully I'll see you all soon. And everyone sort of waves, and, and I think everyone is sort of crying a little bit. Um, and there is a shimmer, red shimmer, that appears around the two of you. And then when the light clears, you are standing on the edge of the golf course, in the woods. You are in your like adventuring clothes. Oh, not, uh, the, no not, the, not the dress we showed up in. <laughs> uh, you have a sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, Rose, I should add, is basically dressed like a knight. Like she has armor. That's awesome. Um, are we are we back? We are. And like, I think Kat hugs her mom to like, <laughs> part, part as like in celebration and part because just making sure she's physically there. Do you know what I mean? Because she hasn't, because she's been gone so long. It's so hard for her to believe that they're actually home and her mom is here. And she so they're... 
she yeah. picks you up and she just holds you close. She says, you've grown up so much, Kat. You've changed. But now you are a hero. Now you know how to stand up for yourself in this world and the other. And I'll always be with you. Thanks, Mom. Now let's go show Dad my sword! And, like, grabs yeah. her mom's <laughs> hand and is, like, <laughs> trying to take her back to, like, this boring parties that she left from. Yep, I think the, uh, the, the camera sort of zooms out on the two of you crossing the golf course back to the, the dinner, which is still happening. Yeah. As if no time has passed at all. Yeah. And we sort of zoom out on that. And everyone lives happily ever after. Yeah. What Thank a you. good game. Thank you what for running this game, game. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> oh Thank my... you all for playing. Oh my god, I love this game so, so much. It is a very sweet game. I really kind of enjoy running it both times I've run it now. It, it's been really good. Thank you all so much for playing and Jason, thank you so much for yeah. running this. It was so heckin' cute. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe. I guess that's the end though. But um It was a good ending. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. very good. We actually had like a very nice happy ending. It was such a good story. We got to tell a lot of story in just two two sessions. Yep, and Kat definitely now has a whole set of beliefs that she didn't start with. Yeah. <laughs> our our little girl has changed a lot on her adventure. It's awesome. Um, let's go around and ask everyone uh, who they are, what they're doing, and also favorite moments. Do we have something? Favorite? We can just do favorite moment, unless anyone has a better suggestion. Favorite move? Favorite character? Favorite, favorite moment in the story is probably good. Yeah. OK. Going with Jason. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm I'm Jason. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at, at Jason Levine. Um, I I don't have anything else to promote just yet, um, but yeah, watch this channel because there's all sorts of good stuff on here, um, and I'm sure I'll run something in the future. I just don't know what yet. Um, yeah. But yeah, my favorite moment. Hmm. <laughs> there were some good ones. Uh, <laughs> I, I really think it was like little arsonist cat <laughs> so unexpected <laughs> just, like, just like give me a knife and or else i'm going to burn the castle down yeah <laughs> and then just us trying to come up with a creative belief that <laughs> that wasn't just like fire answers to all problems <laughs> there's no problem arson can't solve <laughs> <laughs> that was so good yeah <laughs> So yeah, that's me. Okay. Like Megan. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan. You can find me on the internet at Megan Lynn FTW. Um, what else? Um, you can find the games that I write on uh, Megan Lynn FTW.itch.io. Got some cool stuff on there. I'm working on a new one right now that I'm like super, super excited about. So stay tuned. Hopefully that's out soonish. Um, I'm hosting a game jam right now about robot feelings. Um, so if you want to write a game about having feelings about robots, um, you can go on and join that. Um, I am in a streaming game on the Chromatic Chimera. Um, it's an Eberron campaign that's on Mondays at 6.30. Um, I play a very good, incredibly naive wizard. Um, And then also on the Chromatic Chimera, a week from Tuesday, um, on the 25th, I am hosting a monthly stream of um, GM-less and prep-less games with a rotating um, group of players that I'm very excited about. So we're playing For the Queen um, on the 25th with some pretty awesome people. Um, So that's me. Uh, my favorite moment. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> There's so many good ones. I know. I think I just really liked 
like talking with with the dragon in getting the drag and getting them to like not be afraid to leave their cave and then we all got to fly on a dragon which was really fun amazing yeah that's me awesome let me hi i'm lemmy um you can find me on twitter at lemon and honeyco i also have a business called lucky hand dice where i sell handcrafted dice and we're moving into more other stuff as well so if you'd like if you like dice i have a store <laughs> um here does my... not like dice yeah. <laughs> no that's not a thing <laughs> you have described like, I... a not a thing <laughs> like I, i'm very confused by those words in that <laughs> arrangement yeah <laughs> that doesn't exist um, i have see let's see favorite moments um i definitely liked the dragon i definitely liked the arson <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. i th- i thought we could have pushed that a little bit further <laughs> but we really could have pushed the arson further <laughs> um i think my favorite moments are being able to um change the manners into beliefs that's like uh that's that's actually my favorite moments like i do not like being told what to do whatsoever so yeah valid amazing i love it yeah this game system is so cute i i love love i love 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 it i love like all our characters and the moves that they got to have like i i can't believe like how heckin' cute this whole game is. Thank you all for playing it. Thank you, Jason, for running it. Um, and yeah, anyone watching this should go check it out. Um, if you're watching in, if you're watching right now on Twitch, I've already put it in the chat. And if you watch later on YouTube, I've put this as long along with everyone's personal info down below. So go find all these cool people and all the stuff they do and check out this game for yourself. Um, my name is Jess. This is my channel. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, come hang out with us here for lots of uh, different TTRPG and video games later on tonight. Dustin and I are going to be heading into uh, Destiny because right now it is Crimson Days, which is code for Valentine's. And we're going to do lots of cute romantic, like two, they, they've made all the quests two person. You have to couple up and do everything <laughs> cute and everything's covered in hearts and rose petals. It's really adorable. Uh, so we're going to do that. But yeah, absolutely come back here. Uh, We have regular campaign of Blades in the Dark. We often run a whole bunch. We have Fiasco Fridays. We do so many heckin' uh, Jamless Prepless games. We were just showing off uh, Mall Kids and that whole new Kickstarter. Oh, hi! I'm also going to be writing for the Mall Kids game, so uh, check out that game. It's so super duper duper um, heckin' cute. Last night we played for Winds and Following Seas. Just whatever cute and odd stuff we find over on itch.io. Um we play quite often honestly um we're 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 at the whim of whatever is cute um whatever cute indie we're at the whim of whatever is cute yeah it's not my fault i have no control of it if you make if you make a cute uh dmless prepless game and you put it on itch.io i am vulnerable vulnerable to to having it on the channel uh, and Megan and I just finished our game jam, uh, the Fraudulent Gaze game jam, and there were so 20, 23 heckin' adorable submissions. So many good games. So many oh. cute things. So do go check that out, and we'll be bundling that up very uh, soon. Um, so so check that out, and all the cute, cute, cute games um, in in that. And uh, in, yeah, and then come back here, come out back here and play more games with us and hang out and do uh, all the all the good stuff. Um, and find these cool people and all the awesome stuff they're doing because there's so much stuff happening. Oh, hi there. <laughs> oh, hi. We have a new friend. Yeah, hi. hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Can you say hi? She's, she's like, no. 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 <laughs> no. That's okay. That's um, all right. That's all right. It's totally understandable. We understand those feels. You don't have to do what we listen. We just learned you never have to do what other people tell you to do. Exactly. So you're all, go- you're all good. That. We just established this, so you're totally heckin' fine. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to go raid Scraticus Academy because they are doing a, like, yes. 24-hour charity stream for St. Jude's. Um, yeah. It's a really, really good heckin' cause, so let's go over there and show them some love. 
Uh, thank you all so much. Thank you all so much for playing and Jason for running this and everyone who hung out for this wonderful, wonderful game. Um, y'all are the best. Wait, did I say a favorite moment? You didn't. I didn't say a favorite moment. It's definitely, I, it's hard because everyone said so many good things already. Like literally I love meeting the dragon. I love that we pulled <laughs> Sir Scratch away from that poop head, uh, cad, yeah. honestly. And, and, and Sir Scratch can go be their own, I, their own person I, now. I have another one too. Oh, what? Oak breaking into song. Yes! Oh my god! I was gonna say that. I was gonna say like the goodbyes, the good, just the goodbyes. This episode were so sweet. They broke my heart, and I love them. And I love that we got everyone got like a little moment. It was so cute, and um, and and also also the tea, the tea last 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 <laughs> session. The mm -hmm. that that the that it is canon in our world that uh, Kat introduced this world to Bo <laughs> this magical world to Boba Tea. Um, yes. I, I think that is so wonderful and magical. Um, but yeah, thank you all so, 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 so heckin' much. I heart all your faces. Uh, hopefully we'll see you all soon for more games. Um, have a good night and we'll see you later.